Outside of a handful of dedicated professionals and hobbyists, today hardly anyone uses film, consumer photography having gone almost entirely digital. But who came up with this groundbreaking technology and how did it manage to almost entirely replace film within a single generation? Photographic images have been captured and transmitted electrically since at least the 1880s when inventors like Shelford Bidwell, Arthur Korn, and Elisha Gray developed the first practical facsimile or fax machine. In the 20th century, this would be developed into wire photo machines used by news agencies to quickly transmit photographs for publication. However, these machines all required the original photograph to be taken using a regular camera and developed before before it could be scanned and transmitted. The first steps towards digital image capture took place in 1926 when Scottish inventor John Logie Bard demonstrated the first mechanical television. This invention was soon greatly improved and made commercially viable via the development of the electronic camera and television tube by Philo Farnsworth, Vladimir Zworkin, and others. However, for the first decade of practical commercial television, no method existed for recording these transmitted signals, meaning that television programs had to be broadcast live. Then in 1951, a team at the American Ampex Data System Corporation developed the first system for encoding television signals onto magnetic tape, allowing broadcasts to be recorded and edited prior to transmission. Despite these developments, transmission technology for still images remained largely tied to traditional photography methods. For example, on October the 7th, 1959, the Soviet space probe Luna 3 captured and transmitted the first images of the hitherto unseen far side of the moon. This was accomplished in two stages. First, an onboard camera and darkroom system automatically captured and developed the images on regular 35mm photographic film. The developed photos were then scanned, converted into electronic signals, and then transmitted via radio by a system similar to those used in wire photo machines. However, digital imaging technology was rapidly advancing. Just two years before Luna 3, a team at the U.S. National Bureau of Standards headed by computer programmer Russell Kirsch developed a scanner that could convert images into a grid of discrete digital elements which could be stored onto a computer. Each of these elements recorded the brightness of that region of the image, allowing it to be reconstructed in grayscale. Eight years later, engineer Frederick Billingsley of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory would dub these picture elements, or pixels for short. The first image scanned with this system was a 176 by 176 pixel photograph of Kirsch's three-month-old son, Warren, which in 2003 was named by Life magazine as one of the hundred photographs that changed the world. But Kirsch's system did more than allow computers to take, store, and print images. It also allowed them to analyze and manipulate them, making possible now ubiquitous technologies like character and face recognition software and image editing programs like Photoshop. But while Kirsch was proud of his overall accomplishments, he was less enthusiastic about his choice to make pixels square, which he felt hampered the resolution of digital imaging. He states squares was the logical thing to do. Of course, the logical thing was not the only possibility, but we use squares. It was something very foolish that everyone in the world has been suffering from ever since. The next key development in digital imaging was the charge couple device, or CCD, developed by physicists Willard Boyle and George Smith at Bell Laboratories in 1969. While studying applications for metal oxide semiconductor, or MOS-based microelectronics, Boyle and Smith realized that an array of MOS capacitors could be made to work like a magnetic bubble memory array, a device that stores information using small magnetized regions on a piece of metal film. By building a rectangular array of MOS capacitors, they were able to create a sensor that could digitally capture and store images directly without a photographic or television intermediary. CCDs worked by converting light energy into electric charge. When an image is projected onto a CCD array, each individual MOS capacitor accumulates and stores more or less charge based on the intensity of the light that falls on it. Once the image is captured, the CCD control circuit commands each capacitor to pass its charge onto its neighbor, bucket brigade style, until it reaches the output wires at the edge of the array. This amplified charge is then measured and stored by an image processing unit. By repeating this process with all the capacitors in the array, a full image can be built up digitally. Three years later, British engineer Michael Trompset combined a CCD with a multicolored screen called a Bayer filter to produce the world's first digital color image, a picture of his wife. By 1975, CCD-based video cameras like the Fairchild MV-101 were being used by TV cameramen to make live broadcasts and by military researchers to record weapons tests. However, these cameras were heavy and bulky, and the consumer photography market was still entirely dominated by film. But that same year, a historic breakthrough took place at the undisputed giant of photographic innovation, 
Eastman Kodak Laboratories in Rochester, New York. As we have previously covered, for nearly a century, Kodak held a near monopoly on the American consumer photography market, producing 90% of all film and cameras purchased in the country in 1976. And introducing such groundbreaking technologies as the Brownie Personal Camera, Kodachrome Color Film, and Super 8 Home Movie Film. It was thus perfectly poised to launch the digital image revolution. And so it was that in December of 1975, Kodak engineer Steve Sasson was experimenting with CCDs, and by combining one with various components scrounged from around his laboratory, he created the first self-contained digital camera system. By modern standards, his creation was very crude. It weighed a whopping 4 kilograms, had a resolution of only 0.01 megapixels, took 23 seconds to capture a single black and white image, and recorded those images onto a magnetic tape cassette. Nonetheless, it thoroughly proved the concept, presenting a tantalizing glimpse of the future. But when Sasson presented his invention to Kodak executives, their reaction was shockingly cold. They dismissed the very concept of digital photography, arguing that consumers would not want to view their family photos on a television set. But the real reason was far more cynical. Kodak had built its entire empire on the sales of photographic film, and its executives could not imagine a profitable future without their number one cash cow. So Kodak passed on the golden opportunity to pioneer a brand new market, leaving other companies to pick up the digital torch and run with it. Thus, the first commercially available digital camera was not produced by Kodak, but was the Sony Mavica released in 1981. It had a resolution of 0.27 megapixels, could store 50 images on a floppy disk, and displayed said images by being plugged into a television screen. This was followed by the Canon RC701 in 1984, the Fuki DS1P in 1988, and the Logitech Photoman in 1991. However, these early cameras had resolutions far inferior to ordinary film, had limited storage memory, and were heavy, bulky, and expensive, limiting their market to journalists and military clients. And while Kodak finally decided to enter the digital market in 1991 with a DCS100, the world's first digital single-lens reflex or DSLR camera, it was too little too late. Kodak put relatively little effort into marketing its digital cameras, still preferring to focus on film sales and processing, and by the end of the 1990s was losing around $60 per camera sold. This failure to change with the times and press their early advantage would be one of the major factors behind Kodak's eventual decline and collapse, with the company filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy in 2012. From here, digital cameras improved incrementally, steadily increasing in resolution and storage and decreasing in weight and price. The first digital camera with a now ubiquitous rear screen was the Casio QV10, introduced in 1995. While in that same year, Logitech released the Video Man, the first digital webcam that could be plugged into a personal computer, and Ricoh the RDC-1, the first digital still camera that could record both video and sound. Finally, in 1999 and 2000, Kyocera and Samsung introduced the first cell phones with built-in cameras, completely reshaping the consumer digital camera barely a decade after it had been born. By 2003, camera phone sales had overtaken standalone digital cameras, and the rest, as they say, is history.